Hi, good afternoon. Thank you once again for tuning in to Mama Sanity. It is Friday. I hope you have a great weekend planned. I know I do. My mom is coming into town. Yay! Um, me, we, we love when Gogo, my kids call her Gogo, we love when she comes into town because um, we don't get to see her very often. So way, way excited about that. So we've got big plans for this weekend. Um, I'm coming um, to y'all today. Yes, um, Friday, food for thought. Um, it's kind of long, um, so just bear with me. I wanted to talk to you um, a lot about choices. I know I've talked to you all in the past about choices and the decisions that you make, um, but this is going a little bit deeper into how um, your choices not only affect others, but affect you and how we are the main source of our happiness. So let me get started. Imagine this. If you have $86,400 in your account and someone steals $10 from you, would you be upset and just throw away the remaining $86,390 at the hopes of getting back at that one person who took your $10? Or would you move on and live? You probably move on and live, right? So we have 86,400 seconds in each day. Don't let someone's negative 10 seconds ruin the remaining 86,390 seconds of our day. Don't sweat the small stuff. Life is bigger than that. I wanted to share that with y'all today because every day is a new day, right? Every day we have a fresh start. I'm very guilty of this, I will admit. So I let somebody's negative thoughts or actions kind of affect the rest of my day or the rest of my week. And over the years, I've kind of learned I need to stop doing that. Because, you know, if something upsets me, you know, happy, happy wife, happy life, you know, so it kind of goes also with the mom side is, so the way I feel is going to affect my husband and my kids and the neighbors outside, you know, if I'm out there talking to them and I'm kind of, you know, down and sad and blue and, you know, I'm not saying bottle up your emotions and I'm, I'm not saying don't address your issues or don't go to God and vent or you know do what you need to do but what I am saying is don't let that person or persons who did something wrong to you or made you angry or upset don't let them affect the rest of your day okay your happiness comes from you and so just blow it off, okay? Just kind of roll with the punches and get through. And I know that's easier said than done. And like I said, I'm very guilty of letting others affect my attitude. And then it's kind of like glue me around my house for a while because, you know, mom's in a bad mood or somebody upset mom or whatever. And I'm really, really, really trying hard to say, okay, no, that upset me. I'll deal with it. But I'm going to live the rest of my day happy. Um, that leads me into a quote. It says, happiness is a choice, not a result. Nothing will make you happy until you choose to be happy. No person will make you happy unless you decide to be happy. Your happiness will not come to you. It comes from you. I really wanted to share that with y'all today because like I said, our happiness should not come from other people. Yes, we are happy and we love our family and we love our spouses and we love our neighbors and our friends and, and we're happy when we're around them. But what I'm trying to say is your soul happiness and purpose should not come from others around you. Why? Well, because we're human and we're all going to disappoint people and we're all going to make mistakes and we're all going to stumble and fall and we're all going to do things that hurt other people. You know, not trying to but it it just happens and so growing up you know all my life I've kind of thought the opposite you know I thought okay people are supposed to make me happy you know my mom and my dad and my brother and my husband and my children and they're all supposed to make me happy so if they do something that upsets me then I can't be happy because these people that I put a hundred percent trust in let me down same thing I let people down all the time not meaning to, not wanting to, but it happens, we're human. And so we all get hurt and we all hurt others. And what this is saying is you can't let your soul happiness be put in earthly, worldly people. Again, 
we should love each other, we should do for each other, we should try and help each other, and we should try and love each other and not be negative, but it's between you and God of you need to grab God's hand every day. I have to do this every day and say, okay, well, this was said to me or this was done or wasn't done or this happened. And I'm starting to get into that pit of anger or depression or upset. And I've got to stop myself and say, God, I need your help. I don't want this to affect the rest of my day. I don't want this to affect my attitude. God, you and I will discuss this later. I'll pray about it later, but for right now, like it says, happiness will not, it's not going to chase you down. Okay, you, it has to come from you. And so you have to make that choice of, okay, I'm upset, I'm depressed, I'm angry, I'm frustrated. However, I'm not going to let that ruin the rest of my day. Okay. Next quote is, life is too short to be unhappy. You have to take the good with the bad. Smile when you should, love what you got, and always remember what you had. Always forgive, but never forget. Learn from your mistakes, but never regret. People change and things go wrong, but always remember life goes on. That is so true in so many levels. Okay, so forgiveness is the key. Okay, somebody does something to you, you forgive them. Does it say you're going to forget what they did? No, okay, but you will forgive. Okay, God forgives us a million times a day for all the wrongs that we did. Okay, so who the heck are we to say, you know, the ruler of the world is going to forgive us for what we did, but us earthly people can't forgive each other. Like I said, it's a struggle, things happen, and I know you're probably saying, well, Brandy, you just don't understand what this person did to me, or you don't understand what happened. Okay, I understand that. It may be extremely, extremely bad, but still, this is saying take the good with the bad. Okay, learn from your mistakes and forgive that person but you are not necessarily going to forget what, what happened to you. But you can't let that bring you down into that pit of depression or despair or anxiety and say, you know, this happened to me, so <clears throat> I am this way and I'm going to continue to be this way because of this happened to me. No, 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 no. I was like that for a very, very long time. You know, things happened to me and so it was kind of like, what was me? Well, this wasn't fair. Well, guess what? Like I tell my kids, life isn't fair. Crap happens. But it's up to you and God to say, God, I need your help. Okay, I want to forgive this person and I want to not live the rest of my life based on things that happened that were bad because he's going to always use them for good. And like this is saying, learn from your mistakes and never regret. I've made a million mistakes. I make a million mistakes every day. I've said that several times. Do I regret anything in my life? No. Why? Because it's made me who I am. And I've said that several times before. So learn from your mistakes, but don't live your life in regret of, I wish I wish I, I could have, would have, should have. Okay. Um, I have a little, um, a little story. It's called Lesson in Time. And it says, when a bird is alive, it eats ants. When the bird dies, ants eat the birds. Time and circumstances can change anything at any time. Don't devalue or hurt anyone in life. You may be powerful today, but remember that time is more powerful than you are. One tree makes a million matchsticks, but only one matchstick is needed to burn a million trees. So be good and do good. Like this is saying, you know, there's a lot of times that we're on top of the mountain and things are going good and we're successful and everything's happening the way we want it to and it's awesome and we're on this like all-time high of life but we can't forget the others around us we can't say okay well we're up here and you're down here so you know you're not important or whatever or maybe you help me get up here but now i'm up here and so i don't need you anymore or whatever the situation may be or if you're way down here you don't need to get frustrated and anxious over, you're just gonna go around the mountain, go around the mountain, go around the mountain, and never get to the top. You will eventually get to the top. It's just going to take time and patience and faith and effort and hard work and dedication. And so like this is saying is the cycle of life. Things go good, things go bad, but you've gotta kinda remain you through everything. You know, like it says in the Bible, 
um, a, for a rich man, um, what does it say? Um, it's easier for a poor man to get into the gates of heaven than it is for a rich man. It's like squeezing a camel through the eye of a needle. In other words, saying a lot of people, not all that, I'm not saying that, but a lot of people when we get like rich and successful and we kind of forget about everything around us and we kind of think that, hey, we're all high and mighty and we're on the top of the world and that's not how God wants us to be. So he blesses you and he can not bless you and take it away just like that. And so what we always need to remember is choices. Okay, always be good to people and do good for people, whether you're on the top of the mountain or you're at the bottom of the mountain. You've always got to be happy and just say, okay, I'm not going to let the enemy tear me down. You know, what I've heard um, in scriptures, and Joyce talks about it a lot, is the enemy really, really tries to tear you down. He wants you to be unhappy, and he wants you to... Look at the faults and the people that you love the most. And so he really focuses in on, like, um, when you're married, he focuses in on your spouse. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be just your spouse. It, it can be a family member or somebody that you really, really care about. What he likes to do is he likes to say, okay, well, this is wrong and this is wrong and they don't do this and they don't do that. And, you know, I'm not happy because of this. And he constantly comes at you with, there's all these things wrong with this person. But let me, I'm here to tell you that I'm guilty of doing that a lot. And I know a lot of people probably do that to me too. They look at the negative in me and, and I look at the negative in other people. And I've got to stop myself and say, you know what? I love this person and I chose this person or this person's in my family or they, they are to be loved, okay? And there are reasons to love them. And you've got to focus on that. You can't be focused on that person walks in the room and you've got the little devil right here whispering in your ear. Well, they're never going to be this and they're not going to be that. And they're never going to do this and they're never going to do that. And you're just going to be unhappy for the rest of your life and blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. The enemy is here to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay? And the way to crush the enemy, Joy says, is to love and to be happy and to do good for others. The enemy hates it when we're happy. He hates it when we're out there doing good. It crushes him. So that's a, a big thing that I kind of try and remind myself and tell myself when I feel myself getting angry or frustrated or focusing on the negative qualities of this person or the negative things of that person. I really, really try hard. Not perfect. I screw up all the time. But I really, really try to say, okay, no, the enemy's coming at me. I rebuke you. And God, I need your help to remind me of the good qualities of this person, why I'm with this person, why I love this person. This person is, you know, my family, this person to my friends or, you know, whatever the situation, I have to have God's strength and mercy to come through me and to crush the enemy and say, no, I'm not going to focus on all their faults because I don't want somebody focusing on all my faults. I know it happens, but you, you know what I'm saying? You've just got to focus on the positivity of what that person has and has to bring and not focus on all the negative things about that person. Because like I said, that is the enemy trying to get you and tear you down and ruin that relationship. Okay, so let's not let him do that. Um, watch your thoughts for they become words. Watch your words for they become actions. Watch your actions for they become habits. Watch your habits for they become character. Watch your character for it becomes your destiny. Like I said before, monkey see, monkey do, right? So they say a lot, a lot of times when you're around a certain type of person and you're always around them, you start to become like that person. Um, and hopefully it's, it's for the better, you know? And what this is saying is you've really got to watch what you do and what you say because over time if you're this constant constant negative Nancy and the people around you are going to start to react that way and they're going to think negative you know like I said I'm not perfect I struggle with this all the time you know I've always I was always the what if what if what if type of person I'm a lot better now I'm not where I need to be but I'm trying to grow in that area of trying not to be so negative there's several times I still am negative and I that's the first thing that pops in my head was well we can't do this because of this and you know 
I'm trying to weigh the pros and the cons, and there's a big difference between, you know, the facts and, okay, we do, like I said before, we do need to weigh the pros and the cons of a situation before we make that decision because it affects everybody around us. But I really try so hard not to focus on the negative. And like I said, I struggle with this all the time. And, you know, I've seen me focusing on the negative a lot. I've seen it show throughout my kids, you know the kids will say, well, I can't do this because of this, and I'm never going to get this, and whatever, and then it's really kind of like a slap in the face to me, because it's like, wow, no, you know, but I've been that person throughout their lives saying, oh, well, we can't do this because of this, or we can't do that, you know, whatever, and so this is really helping me to, it's a daily struggle, it is a daily, minute-by-minute struggle of, I've got to watch my thoughts, because the thoughts what are deep down will eventually come out. And it was funny because today Joyce was talking about the power of the tongue. And I know I've talked about the power of the tongue several times. And I know I've talked about, you know, me needing to bite my tongue a lot more because I have a big problem with not biting my tongue. And I need to. And one word could either bring a person up way high or it can tear a person down just by one word. And we really, really need to always remember that before we choose to say and react the way that we're feeling because God says it's not a sin to be angry okay we can feel anger what it is a sin is to act out in that anger and like I said I'm guilty of this a million times a day there's several times where I let the enemy take control and I let my anger get the best of me and I just you know and it's a struggle and I'm trying really really hard to say no just zip it and I'll pray about it and we'll talk about it later when we're calmer and you know it is a daily 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 struggle and like I've said also earlier in the week your decisions they don't affect just you but they affect everybody around you so if your thoughts become your actions okay and then your actions they start to become habits and then others see you do that and then your habits become you're known for being this type of person don't you want to be known as not perfect because we're never going to be perfect we're never going to be the person that has it all together we're, we're, just, we're human we're never going to be like that but don't you want to be known as the person who can admit their faults and admit when they're wrong and be known as the person who tries to get back up okay and and doesn't just stay in this pit of anger or despair or depression or weakness or whatever and we just say no I'm not I'm going to fight this and I'm going to be a positive influence to those around me I don't want my kids growing up saying oh mom was always negative or mom was always upset or angry or whatever you know granted I do get upset I do have negative thoughts and I do say negative things and like I said this is a daily struggle for me and I'm trying so hard to have I want to, my goal is to have a lot more like I said nobody's perfect my goal is to have a lot more positive actions and thoughts and words so that when my kids do grow up they can say guess what yes you know mom's human and and she got upset or she would say this or she would do that but in the end, I want them to say there was a lot more positivity and she taught me how to never give up and she taught me how to stay positive and she taught me how to have faith in myself. That is, you know, that is my goal. And some days I'm okay at it and some days I'm not so okay. And that's when I've got to go to God at the end of the day and say, God, or all throughout the day, actually, God, help me, help me help me. I'm kind of, you know, I do. I like Joyce does it too. You know, she says, walk through your day and pray your way through the day. And there's tons of times where I do. I'm just like, help me, God, help me, help me, or get me through this, or give me the strength to, to get through this, or I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You know, and it's, it's not just you pray in the morning, you pray at night and you're done. It's a constant all throughout the day, things happen and you've got to choose to be happy and choose to be a good example and do good for others and in choosing that you can have the strength and mercy of God to help you get through that um, the last thing I want to share with you <clears throat> is talking about the positive and the negative and how it kind of balances out it says hate has four letters so does love the enemy has seven letters so does friends lying has five letters 
so does truth. Negative has eight letters, so does positive. Under has five letters, so does above. Cry has three letters, so does joy. Anger has five letters, so does happy. Right has five letters, so does wrong. Hurt has four letters, so does heal. What does all this mean? It means that life is a double-edged sword, so transform every negative side into an aurora of positivity. We should choose a better side of life. I want to end with that today because it's true. Yes, I know that there's a lot of gray area in between, but you have a positive side and you have a negative side. And for every positive, there's kind of a negative that balances out. And it's up to you to choose are you going to be that negative Nancy and choose negativity all the time? Are you going to choose, you know, like it said, are you going to choose the hate of friends or love? Are you going to choose enemy over friends? Are you going to choose lying over truth? Are you going to choose being under or are you going to choose above? Are you going to choose to be sad and cry all the time? Are you going to choose to try and come out of it and choose joy? Do you see where I'm going with this? It's your choice you choose your happiness things are going to happen things are going to come when it rains it storms right things are going to be coming at you from all different directions and that's the enemy trying to tear you down and say nope your life sucks it's always going to suck it's never going to get better no that's not the truth we need to choose to say nope i'm taking the hands of god i'm going to get through this and i'm going to get out of this pit and i'm going to reach the top of the mountain no matter what it takes so the whole point is, is to, like I've said a million times before, choose to be positive, choose to do good for others, choose to be happy. It all comes from you. Don't rely on anybody else except for you and God to do good and be happy. And then everything else will fall into place. Hope that's not too crazy for you on this Friday afternoon. Um, I hope y'all have a great weekend and until next time, stay sane.